bail me out. Uh, this was 2009's test results. I can't see the board. James. Tell me something. James? Yeah. 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 There's 31 students in that U.S. class. Uh, is there 31? Actually, I only took part of the class. I think there was actually about 38 in the class. But that's good information. That's good for me to know how many actual students were in there. All right, good. Um, Nolan. Something else? Uh, it shows the scores that they received. Yeah, I told you that up front. You've got to do better than that. I can't see the scores. I don't know anything. Tell me something. Describe the data. Make it simple for me. Look, some days you're gonna, someday down the road, especially your sales or whatever, you're gonna have to make a presentation. You've got data to make that presentation. You might have to sell someone on that pre on that data that you have. Tell me something, you know. Tell me something I see here. You wouldn't just throw this up on the wall, would you, and say, "Here it is." Okay, what would you? There's 18 girls and 12 boys. Good. Uh, is that right? 19. 19 and 11. Okay, but, and that's great information. How many girls and how many boys were there? Okay, that's actually called categorical data, which we're going to get to in a second, but that helps me out a lot. All right. Sean. Tell me something else. Uh, the uh, these were out of 80. Okay, I didn't tell you that. The, the, the highest you could get is an 80. The 80 was the max. Um, but so, what are you trying to say, or do something else? Yes. Percentage of the thirty that took the class pass. What percentage? Do you know? On top of it. I mean, that might be good information. I still don't. I don't. Kyle. Yes. Um, I have no more data, but I was just. Are the lines in between the top and bottom number, is that just... No, this person who got a 74 was a girl. Okay. So, all the data I got is already been set. Yeah, it doesn't work anymore. Right. Nice. That's I don't know. I move the ball forward. It doesn't even have to be a right answer. Okay? You've just been given time. You've been working together. Give me something I can use. That's not okay, Kyle. I'm stalling for you. Give me something else. Um, I don't know anything about the numbers at all. I don't... I don't See them. Any information will help. I know I got 19 gir uh, girls and 11 boys, and I—that's all I know. They want to be different or whatever. It's called a mean. What do you got for me? Did you get figured out? Well, I only got the mean for girls, which is 80.07. 80.07? Should the mean be 80 for girls? No. Okay, yeah. Uh, well, I have the mode for the entire. Mode! What's mode? The most. Uh, Happens the most often? Yeah, uh, most often it was, uh, it was 75 and. Uh, what was it? 
That's good information for me as a teacher, right? What the, what the teacher, what the students got most often? Yeah. The class average was a 59.8. How about the whole class? Very good. What'd you say? Uh, 59.83. What? 59.83. The what? Oh, you're asking me what it is? <laughs> okay, good. You said average. You got to be careful. So the mean was about 60, right? 59-ish. Okay, that's great information. Right? Anybody else got some good stuff? Yeah. Uh, boys' average was 58.4. Or boys' mean was 58.4. And the girls was higher? Well, I think, oh, because, oh, I did that one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. One more, one more. Boys mean for 51 and girls mean for 60. Okay, so you guys yeah. broke it down into the various categories and got that got difference. Very good. You guys did a nice job. That's helping the scrap data. Over the next month, we're going to learn how to do this. Okay, it's a critical skill for a statistician. Take a bunch of raw data, make it simple for somebody. Explain it to them, do all that hard work for them so you can present the data for them. In that all right, so once we get done with the warm up, we'll move over to the notes generally. Now, here's sometimes I give you time to write down the notes, uh, other times we've got to do it together. Now, here's what I don't want please do not be writing, 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 and, and you're writing this down here while I'm talking about this. Stay with me, okay? Don't write ahead of it. The way the notes work, if it's on the board or I write it on the board, it better be on your paper. Okay, if it's not, uh, and hopefully you even have more on the paper than that. Hopefully you write yourself little notes of what's going on as well. Class is going on. I don't think you're doing a good job with your notes. I'll say, you know what, I want the notes today. Everybody hands them in. If I find one thing that was on my board that wasn't on your paper, that's a zero. Okay, so keep notes as you go. Just follow your warm-ups. Don't even have to start a new page, okay? So you got your warm-ups, then just write notes in the day. Take your notes tomorrow when you get here. Start your warm-ups right when that's done. Okay? All right, let me show you something in the book real quick, uh, how this book works. It's a great book. Everything that you'll need for May 15th is in this book, but I want to show you something on how the numbers work. Um, and I kind of like how this works. Well, normally you guys have books, like history books or math books. They tell you stuff and you got like a thousand problems to do. Okay, this book's a little different than that. It breaks it up. Yeah, I'm on page four, and that kind of gets us started. And I see some words here, individual variable. Wow, that's what we're going to talk about today. Go to page 7, you see 1-1. One, one. That's the first problem of chapter 1. Okay, and then you see 1-2, one, 1-3, one, 1-4. One, now, if I assign for homework tonight, I don't know, 1 to 1,000. Okay, so you see 1, 2, 3, 4, and then it kind of stops. Keep turning the pages. They talk about some new stuff. And then at the bottom of page 10 is number 5. So don't freak out tonight. The problems are all in there. You just got to dive through and make sure you do your reading. Reading, this math book is something that you're going to do maybe for the first time in your life. On your first test, some of those people didn't figure this out. I may not go over everything that's going to be on that test. It was in your reading. Okay, so you need to read this text as you go along. If you have any questions, make sure you ask them. All right, here we go. We're going to describe this data. We're going to make it simpler for somebody. We're going to break it down. Let me first give you some vocabulary words. I used to kind of skip over this. It wasn't as big a deal for me. And a couple of years ago, individual was on the test. Actually, the word individual, you had to figure out what that is. So pay attention to the vocabulary as we go through as well um, through this. All right, what's the individual? The individual is what are we talking about here? What, who are we talking about? So an individual can be, in this case, it's my period two, 2009, AP statistics students. That's who we're talking about. We might be talking about a person. I'll be talking about an animal. I'll be talking about things. Okay, but what, what are we interested in? What are we, what are we analyzing? Now the variable is what about that person are we looking at? Do we want to know how tall they are? You know, their IQ? In this case, we wanted two things. We wanted to know what their test grades were, and then also their gender. So we're actually looking at two different things in this particular problem. But variable is what's, what's, of, what's of interest of you for that person, for that individual. And the first thing that we do to try to break this down and make it more understandable is we're going to build what's called a distribution. I think I taught the distribution for like five years, and I really didn't even understand what it was. Okay, here's what a distribution is. You can create one, it's just making a chart. We're going to take all those crazy numbers and letters, we're going to make a chart out of it, but here's what this chart has to include. 
First of all, you have to tell me who we're dealing with. In this case, it was what, period 2, 2009, AP student. You have to tell me the variable of interest that you're studying. This is the confusing part over here. You're actually going to give me the value of those variables. And then you're actually going to count how many times they show up. This is a complete distribution. Tell me what the individual is. Tell me what you're studying. Tell me the numbers, there, so the values that came up. Tell me how many times they came up. That's a distribution. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a distribution chart for this particular problem. There are two types of data that we look at in this class. Categorical data versus what's called quantitative data. Let's start with quantitative first. It's a big word. What the heck are they talking about? Quantitative, big giant word. All it means is you get numbers. When you look at it, do you get numbers? Oh, then you're dealing with quantitative data. Categorical data Okay, is it's not numbers, it's just groups of things. Boys, girlfriends, these aren't even numbers, right? These are categories. These are the two types of data that we look at in AP staff. Okay. All right, let's take a look at a category. Let's go ahead and build a categorical distribution chart. The first thing that we need to do for this problem is write down the individual. This problem, the individual is what? Uh, 2009. Second period, AP stats. Yeah. What is the word after of, right next in the parentheses, of categorical? Categorical. Value of variable are groups. The value of the variables are groups. You'll see that when we get there. Okay. So we've given our title. What variable are we studying here? What categorical variable are we taking a look at? No, that's the individual. What what in those in those students, what are we looking at? No, we're in categorical now. Categorical. What categorical data are we looking at? Boy or girl. Yeah, what do we call that? What would be a gender? gender. Okay? You gave me what we're gonna put here. Okay? We're, we're value or what what are we studying? Well we were interested in their gender. That's the variable of interest that we're taking a look at. Now, what values can those variables take on? Boy, boy and girl. Okay. And that's it. Situation. All right, so we're almost there. We've got the individual. We've got what we're looking at. We've got the possible values you can get. Now, take a look at how many that we have. What did you guys tell me? 19, 19 girls. 19 girls, I think, and 11 boys. And a total of 30. We have now completed a categorical distribution chart. Question. What do you like better? This thing? You throw this thing up in a, in a presentation for somebody? Or that chart? Yeah, I mean, doesn't that help you understand what's going on and how many boys and girls there were. We're even going to do better than that chart, but a distribution is a great place to start. We can even add columns to this. Instead of count, uh, I don't know, we could get the percentage of boys and girls. How would I figure that out? How would I figure out the percentage of boys? What would I do here? Uh, 11 out of 30. Yeah, that's why we put that 30 in there. It'll help us with that. What is that? Throw that in there for me. Yeah, 37%. Yeah, so that's this is percent. Uh, give me to one decimal, so 36.6, 30, 30, 36. okay. This one, I can figure that out, 63.4. That makes 100% total. We could add other columns if we wanted to learn other things about it, but that's a distribution chart. All right, even better than just a chart, I mean, you've heard the expression, a picture's worth a thousand words. Let's draw a picture of it. That might even, you know, be able to give us even deeper information just by looking at it. There are two types of pictures that you need to be able to draw for categorical data. One of them's called a bar chart, okay, and the other one's called a pie chart. You probably will be familiar with each of them. 
Bar charts, you see them all the way around the room. All kinds of bar charts all the way around the room. This bar chart over here was 2006. Okay, this is the percentage of people that passed in the year 2006. And I got two categories down here. These are the Elk Grove High School students, and this is everyone else in the country. So in Elk Grove, that year, everyone passed AP test. The rest of the country is 60. But you see the picture even from far away, you can say, wow, I see a difference there. Okay? So a bar chart can be very powerful. So let's go ahead and create a bar chart for this data. All right, so we create our x and y axis. Example of one, if you want to take a look, get your book, open up your book to page 9. We're going to be doing a bar chart over the weekend, so look at the one we create, then also look at the book. Right on top, you have to say your individual. And really, we're just creating a picture of this distribution, so 2009, second period, AP stats. Down at the bottom, we put our categories. So in this particular problem, we got uh, girls, boys. Then you need to create your vertical axis, what numbers we're going to put. Um, you could either do counts. Maybe, you know, go to, I don't know, 25 here and draw the boxes. Or we can do percentages. Take a look at the two different pictures in your book. On the one on page 9, the left-hand column were the actual numbers, the amount of sales. Go to the next page, number 10, they use percentages on the left. Either are fine. The graphs are going to have the same kind of look to them. All right, let's go ahead and do percentages. Uh, so I don't go 0 to 100, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Girls, 1 to 10. Girls, we got 63.4, so you go up to about 63.4. Boys, we had about 36%. I like to do this. Actually, put the number here 63.4. 36.6. I do that on all the graphs out there. The person doesn't have to look over at the column to see exactly what that is. That's just a nice touch for the person. I had a really good question from somebody third period. Well, do I have to go all the way from 0 to 100? And the answer is it depends. I saw this ad in the paper one time. Uh, it was about it was a car dealership. And they were talking about their customer satisfaction, how much, how much better theirs was than the other. So they showed a bar chart. Here's the bar chart, and here was, you know, our company, and then it's the opponents or whoever. Okay. Now, are they lying? No. no. Are they misleading? Yes. You bet. <laughs> so that was the exact ad. Customer satisfaction at you know, Nilo's is much better than everybody else. You can do things with numbers. And this is some of the stuff that you're going to learn in this class. If nothing else, not to be misled. Or if, like you, you're probably one of those guys. that You'll want to draw those for your people. Okay. So just be aware. Okay, this isn't a lie. So in this situation, we would definitely want to show, you know, show it, you know, at least from zero to whatever, you can see a very small difference. Okay, so that's a bar chart. The other type of graph that you might want to draw, if you have categorical data, remember they're just groups, they aren't numbers, is something called a pie chart. Okay, as an example of one on page uh, nine. Pi, let me break the pie up into the percentages. Do the pie chart off of this. These. So I know we've got uh, guess. The girls here. Put the percent in there. That's a good idea. 63.4. Boys here. 36.6. .6. 
and wrap your title with your individual on top. Sometimes you can't fit all that in there. Take a look at that picture. You create a key off to the right because you can't write all of the different categories in the pie. Again, that's a great pictorial view of that. But even breaks this down. You got to do this first before you create these. So do distribution. Question. Are you able to do a pie chart for the data on page 10? You see the bar chart there for 10. Can we do a pie chart for that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right, about half yeses and half noes out there. You like it, huh? Yeah. Okay, what do you got? Uh, you could, but it'd be overlapping. So. Nah! Yeah. No, because they're each having no percent of a different thing. Ah! You're right, you're right, but I need some better too. I say you could because you just have to separate the pie charts by category. Uh, one pie chart then, let me re ask the question. Can you do one pie chart? Yeah. Um, no, because it's over 100%. Yes, right. A pie chart's got to add up to 100%. That particular one, there were different categories. You'd have to do different, you could do a bunch of different pie charts. I think that's what you were saying. But to do one full pie chart, they do need to add up to 100%. Okay. All right, so categorical data, data that's put into groups. Okay, this would be a distribution chart for it, and these would be different pictures that you can draw. The vast majority of our time in here, though, is studying quantitative data. Okay, studying actual numbers that come out of an individual. All right. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's create a distribution chart. Okay for the actual test scores. Okay, so I guess we have the same individual, right? We're studying the 2009 second period, AP stats. All right, Zane, what goes here? That would be the uh, test score. Yes. Okay, we're just defining what the variable of interest is here. Okay, so what variable are we looking at? We're looking at their test scores. You want to get fancy, you could say chapter one test scores, you know. You're right, just test scores. All right, what we're going to do today is long, I'm going to make it a lot simpler for you Monday. Okay, so what you're going to do today, you're like, well, this isn't very good, but we'll make it better for you Monday. But what do we need to put here? What are we going to put down here? All the numbers. All those numbers that we got, those different test scores. So we're going to do that together. So let's just do them in, you know, lowest to highest. So what goes here? 22. Okay. Help me out here. We're going to give yourself a lot of space. We're going to go on for a long time here. What's the next one? 34. 34. Yeah. Good. What's the next one? 38. 38. Good. 43. 38. Another 38. Oh, another 38? So do we write another 38 here? No. 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 Remember what this is for? We count how many of them there are. So there was one of these, one of these. We write two here. There were two 38s. Okay, all right, let's go through it. Help me out here. What's next? 43. Three. Three, how many of them are there? Two. Okay. 45. Okay. 245. 50, is that our next one? 50. 49. 50, 50 how many? Cross them out if you want to put your data. If you weren't be using this data over and over again, so don't lose it. Next one? 54. 54? One? Now, eventually, I hope these add up to 30 of them, right? That'll be our, we'll be able to test ourselves. Next one? 55. How many? One. Okay. I don't know, 59. 59? How many? 
construct. We're going to clean this up Monday. We're not going to have to use it every time. Next one. 60. 60. 60. I'm in. 61. I think this is a lot better, but can we at least say this distribution chart, if it was done correctly, is a little bit better than this? A little easily, is a little organized, gives you an idea what the numbers are and how many there were. Okay. Well, let's draw a picture of this. There are many, many pictures that you're going to have to learn about when dealing with quantitative data. Today, we're going to learn about one of them. It's called a dot plot. I used to not care that much about dot plots. I barely taught it four years ago. First problem: big giant dot plot. Everything we do in our every single day, you are going to learn something that you'll see May 15th. Okay, so every single day, come ready to go. We're going to create a dot plot. Do you want to take a look at one example of one that's on the bottom of page 11? When we're creating a dot plot, the first thing that you've got to do, do this first. Don't try, don't start throwing dots up. Create a number line. Create a good number line. Give yourself a lot of space. Draw a number line. All right, then what have we got from 22 to 81? So I'll go from 20 to 85. So I'll do, and don't do this, because I'm going to put dots up here. So I always do that. There's 20. I just kind of go by fives. 25, 30, 35, 40. actually put a dot on the number line and that will correspond to someone's test score. Alright, so our first one's a 22, so you go to 22 and you put a dot. Test score 34, 35, 40, 40, 40. test score 34. 38, we've got two of them. You stack the dots. So here's one of them, and there's the other one. That tells me I had two scores at the 38. 43, two of them, right? Five, I've got two of them. Fifty, I've got one. Four, one. Five, one. Nine, one. Sixty. Sixty-one. Sixty-five. Sixty-six, I've got two. Sixty-eight, I've got two.
we've created a picture of those test strings. Now, regular stats, learn how to make a picture. AP stats, you know how to make a picture, but then you've got to talk about it. And this is what we're going to be spending the next three weeks of our lives talking about this. There are four things that we're going to talk about when we have quantitative data. Notice we didn't talk about these things over here in categorical. They don't make sense in categorical. Only if you have quantitative data, there are four things that we're going to analyze. Center, shape, spread, and outliners. So over the next three weeks, I'm going to be explaining these to you. Okay. You have a problem through Monday, number eight, and they want you to describe a distribution. In your mind, that means you have to talk about center, shape, spread, outliners. And this is how I want you to write it up. This is our first lesson. Let's see if anybody's paying attention when I come around Monday. You're actually going to write the word center, underline it, and then talk about it in sentences. You're going to write the word shape. You're going to talk about it. I don't want one big giant paragraph is what I'm saying. Okay, you're going to break it up nice for your reader. We want our reader to love us. they got to read like 80,000 of these. We want the reader to say, wow, thank you for doing that. I can read them separately. I'm not going to read them and give you a full That's a world. Okay, so separate it out and write about it. You don't even know what you're writing about yet, but you're just going to kind of fake it on number eight. So here's our picture. So just from the picture, I don't want you to calculate or anything. What do you think center means? What do you do for center? Yeah. Center. What are you going to tell me about center? Uh, maybe, what? You go. Oh, uh, maybe center is like, uh, um, like where the bulk of everyone. Okay, so what would you say for this problem? 65. 65? Okay. Yeah. Is it the median? Oh, you could look at it maybe that way. Which one's kind of in the middle? Okay, you, you're looking for which where the biggest, and there can be a fancy word here, cluster. We're going to talk about that in a minute. You're kind of looking at maybe where the biggest cluster of them are. You're looking at more maybe, you know, which one is the middle score. They're both good, so whichever one you want to go with. So on your homework for number eight, you would just say the center is approximately a score of 65. You would say 60. Okay, we're going to learn more details as we go along. But I just want you to read it. Now, interesting, somebody, third period, said, oh, center? That's easy. It's between 50 and 55. Because they looked at, well, it started at 20 and ended at 85. That's the center of my graph, right? But you want to look at the dots. Okay, not the number line. You want to look at the dots. Those are the actual test scores. That's the actual center that you want to find. Shape. What the heck are they talking about with shape? Well, here's the deal. I, I just, and we're going to learn all about this, but just what shape kind of means. If you would just, you know, roughly draw... sort of thing on top of it like that. Shape is what kind of a shape does it make? It's real rough, okay? Don't make a zigzag thing out of it. It's just a real rough thing. What the heck would you talk about? Yeah. For um, center shape, for all those stuff, do we write complete sentences or do we just... Yeah, so write the word center, underline. Then write a complete sentence. Okay. You're going to fill up like two pages eventually. So you're going to be writing paragraph after paragraph. On this number eight, you're just going to be writing a sentence. You don't know anything yet. But what would you what would you talk about? You know, what what shape? What would you say? Uh, the, maybe the peaks and then the bumps. Yeah, peaks. Great word. I've had three different words. I think one I had humps and I had bumps and now I got peaks. Great. We're gonna learn the right word. Maybe it's a mode. Anyway, let's call it peaks. How many would you say for this? Maybe peaks. Four. Four. That's great. I see four peaks. You're good. Actually, mode. If you may have unimodal, bimodal, try. Anybody heard of this thing? Okay, that's what we're going. But that's good for this one. Spread. What the heck do they want to talk about with spread? What would you say about spread? Yeah. Maybe like a range. Good. Oh, you know, I'm, every other class talked about this something called a range. What the heck's the range? What would you say for range? Yeah, that's not how it what range is, though, actually. You told me the minimum and maximum, and that's great. I like that information. You might want to talk about that and spread what the minimum. But range is actually got to subtract them. You remember way back in algebra one when you learned range? 
So if you're going to use the word range, you'd have to do 81 minus 22 and say what that is. But that's great. I can get that from here. That's not what calculator work, right? You could give me the range in here. How, we want to know how spread out are these tests. You know what I'd like the spread to be? Like 2. And I would like the center to be at 80. That means I did a pretty good job teaching. You guys killed it. I don't know how good I did here, right? I got a range of like 60 or 59, and my center's around 60. But I'll tell you what, on chapter 2, they realized this class was for real. The person that got a 22 got a 4 on the AP test. Okay, they realized, oh, this guy wasn't kidding. i got to really kick it in gear here. Okay, so what can you talk about in spread? So I heard range, I heard high-low. Anything else? How spread out it is? Anything else you see that you could talk about? Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's called a gap. Do you see how the, on the lower side, aren't they a little more spread out? There's gaps between them. Another fancy word for you. You don't have to put them in your sense, but these are kind of bunched up. Plus. So I don't know. You, know, you Give me the range. Give me the high-low. Tell me if there's some gaps or some clusters. No big deal. A couple sentences. And outliers. What do you think outliers mean? They won't get that knowledge, yeah. Numbers that are really far away from the Outlier, yeah, crit, you don't belong. Well, what are you doing here? And it's on the extreme sides. So what would you guys say for outliers? 22. Yeah, 22 maybe, right? I might even look at 34 sideways too. I'm not sure. You can have more than one outlier is what I'm saying. Now, we're, you're actually going to learn a mathematical formula, which is going to show us whether it's considered an outlier or not. But for your homework this weekend, See anything out there that doesn't belong? Call it an outlier. Okay. You need to be in sentences. Okay. I don't want to see just the number sixty and then I, and write a little sentence, but it's you know it's a sentence. You wrote two. You probably went too many. And like I say, we're going to fill up pages and pages of this real soon. Questions? Yeah. What is the outlier? Again? Just yeah. You know, well, any number that this doesn't belong. You're, and it's on the extreme. So it's number that's super low or super high, and you can have more than one outlier. Okay. Uh, you know, that's probably not an outlier now that I think about it, but you know, maybe. But I think, you yeah. know. Okay, a lot of stuff today, okay? What we're going to do, our job, your job as a statistician, someday when you're giving presentations, you've got to make sense of this stuff. How do we do that? Okay, we're going to make distribution charts and we're going to draw pictures of it. And then we're going to be able to explain to people, actually describe the data. Remember, I said I can't see it. Describe it to me. These are the kinds of things that you're going to be describing.